فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه والتابعين له باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى in today's lesson uh, this is the fourth lesson right this is the third lesson نعم a third lesson we're going to take the uh, biography تعريف uh, الموجز بمصنف كتاب البلوغ المرام من أدلة الأحكام الحافظ بن حجر رحمه الله تعالى We're going to take a summary or a summarized biography of the author of the book بلوغ المرام الحافظ ابن حجر رحمه الله تعالى And the way we're going to take him is in the, in the following way The point number one The first thing that we're going to be speaking about number one which is ismuhu wa nasabuhu wa laqabuhu wa kunyatuh. The first one is going to be his name, his lineage, his, uh, his nickname, and his kunya. His kunya. His kunya is um, who is he attributed to as a son? Uh, no, who is he attributed to as to be of his sons? Abu what? That's a kunya. The second, inshallah ta'ala, that we're going to be speaking about is Mawliduhu wa makan wiladati. Which will speak about his birth and where he was born. The second one is going to be birth and where he was born. Number three is going to be Nash'atuhu wa talabuhu lil ilm. The third is going to be, inshallah ta'ala, um, how he grew up his upbringing and his path in seeking knowledge. Um, that was the third, right? The fourth is going to be مَكَانَتُهُ الْعِلْمِيَّةِ وَالثَّلَاءِ الْأَئِمَّةِ عَلَيْهِ His position of knowledge, his caliber of knowledge, his status of knowledge, what is it? And how the scholars praised him. What did the scholars say about him in praising him? The fifth, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be Musannafatuh. His books that he wrote. The books in which he, rahimahullah, wrote. Musannafatuh, the books that Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, wrote. Those are the five points that we will speak about in the life of Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala. Number one, let's go back to the first one. Ismuhu wa nasabuhu wa laqabuhu wa kunyatuh. What's his name? His name is Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Muhammad uh, ibn Muhammad uh, ibn Ali uh, ibn Mahmud uh, ibn Ahmed. So his name is Ahmed ibn Ali. Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Ali, Ibn Mahmud, Ibn Ahmed. And this is that name that I mentioned is what his student Al Sakhawi said in his Kitab Al Jawahir wa Durar. Al Imam Al Sakhawi in his book Al Jawahir wa Durar, and it's a book that he wrote in just a biography of who? Uh, Ibn Hajar. Skud al Jawahir wa Durar, fi tarjamati Sheikh al Islam ibn Hajar, and it's three volumes. <coughs> and many scholars, many scholars, they studied ibn Hajar. PhDs were taken on him, masters were taken on him, theses and dissertations were done on his life. Rahimahullah ta'ala. One of the best books written on his life is the one that is written by uh, Dr. Shakir Mahmoud Abdul Mun'im. Dr. Shakir Mahmoud Abdul Mun'im. He wrote a book called Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. Musannafatu wa dirasatu fi manhajihi wa mawridi fi kitabihi al Isaba. 
also Kamaluddin and Izzuddin. There's a book called Ibn Hajar al Asqalani Mu'arrikhan. Um, and other than him, like Abdi Sattar al Shaykh, he wrote a book called Al Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani, Amir al Mu'minina fil Hadith. Uh, Muhammad Yusuf Ayyub, he wrote Al Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani, Hayat wa Shi'ru. So many angles and many fields he was studied. Dr. Saleh al Sayyah, his book is also good because he talks about his methodology in how he speaks about the A'imma and the narrators that are in Sahih al Bukhari, in which Ibn Hajar um, springs, the ones who are criticized. There are some who are criticized by Ibn Imam al Bukhari in his Sahih. Some scholars they criticize some of the narrators. Ibn Hajar defended, he defended uh, Imam al Bukhari. So a book was written on that by a doctor, Salih al Sayyah. He called it Manhaj al Hafiz ibn Hajar fi Difa'i an Rijali Sahih al Bukhari al Mutakalamu fihim. So that's his name. Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Mahmud ibn Ahmed. And that's what his student, Al Imam al Sakhawi, said. After he brought his name like that, after he brought his name, Sakhawi rahimahullah, Ba'd an Saqa, after he brought Nasabuhu, he said, Hada huwa al Mu'tamadu fi Nasabihi la adhkuru ziyadatan ala dhalik. He said, This is what is relied upon in his lineage and his name. And he said, I don't, I will not mention any additional point to this. Or I don't remember any additional names of his. And the thing he's trying to point out here, Sahabi rahimahullah ta'ala, and he's trying to point out is, there's a khilaf in which occurred in his fourth granddad. His fourth granddad. You see, there's a discussion that went, which is, is his name Mahmoud or is it Ahmed? His fourth granddad. Is it what? The fourth one, is he Mahmoud or is it Ahmed? There's a discussion. So if you count, don't count Ibn Hajar's father, don't count his name and don't count his father's name. So start counting from his actual granddad, his father's father. His father's father's name is who? Muhammad. So Muhammad, Muhammad, Ali, and the fourth granddad is going to be who? Yeah, Mahmoud, right? That Mahmoud, is his name Mahmoud or is it Ahmed? There's a khilaf. That's a dispute. As for the remaining, فَمَا بَقِي مِنْ سِلْسِلَةِ نَسَبِي وَأَجْدَادِي And as for the remaining, there's no problem with it. His nickname is Shihabuddin. That's his nickname. That is his nickname. His kunya is Abu al-Fadl. And his father gave him this kunya. Kannahu biha abu. His father gave him this kunya. And this is the kunya, wa hiya al-kunya allati ishtahara wa sara ma'roofan biha. This is the this is the uh, the kunya in which he became very well known for. Now we've mentioned his name, we've mentioned his nickname, Laqab. We've also mentioned his what? His kunya. We now have to mention his lineage. Where is he from? Where's his lineage? وَأَمَّا نِسْبَتُهُ As for his lineage, فَإِنَّهُ يُقَالُ لَهُ He is called Kinaniyu. He's Kinani. Al-Asqalaniyu. Kinani is a tribe. نِسْبَةً إِلَى قَبِيلَةِ كِنَانَةً إِحْدَ الْقَبَائِلِ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ It's from one of the Arab tribes. So he's called Al-Kinani. And Kinani is one of the Arab tribes. وَأَمَّا الْأَسْقَلَانِيُّ أَسْفُ أَسْقَلَانِي Then Asqalan is a Medina, it's a city. بِسَاحِلِ الشَّامِ مِنْ فِلِسْطِينِ It is a shore. of Sham, and you know Sham is what? Jordan, Syria, Palestine, um, Lib Lebanon, uh, they all are what? They're all Jordan, they're all 
Sham, even part of Saudi Arabia is Sham, like Tabuk. They, those, they fall under Sham. You see? So he was, he was what? He's a Nisbah, his lineage is to Asqalan, which is a city on the what? On the shores of Palestine. Are you with me? And this place, Asqalan, this city, كانت موطن أصول وجداني. This is his where his lineage, and this is where his forefathers are from. That's that city. But what happened? إلى أن نقلهم. But then they were moved from that city. Who moved them from there? صلاح الدين الأيوبي. صلاح الدين الأيوبي. He moved his family and his tribe from this city to Egypt. Are you with me? لما خربها بعد أن رأى المصلحة في ذلك. After he destroyed it, after he destroyed it, and he saw صلاح الدين saw a مصلحة a benefit في ذلك على إثر الحروب الصليبية. الصليب after the fight that he had with the Crusades, he saw a benefit to destroy the city. So he's what? He's great granddads and his forefathers, all of them are from Asqalan, which is a Medina. It's a Medina Bisahil Shah min Filistin. Also, what is additionally added onto his lineage is Al Misri. He's a Misri. Egyptian and Al Qahiri Al Qahiri from Cairo. Why? Because Ibn Hajar was born in Egypt. He was born and he moved to where? He moved to Al Qahira. He moved to Qahira. So that's why you find his Kinani, because that's his tribe. Al Asqalani, because that's where his forefathers were from and the land that they were from. But he is Egyptian, in the sense where he was born in Egypt and he lived in Qahira. So he's Al Qahiri. Now the question that arises as why is he well known as Ibn Hajar? Why Ibn Hajar? Ibn Hajar. As for him becoming very well known as the name Ibn Hajar, فظاهر what is apparent is أنه لقب لأحد الأعلى الأعلى في نسبه. What is apparent? أنه لقب لأحمد الأعلى في نسبه. That this is what? That this is the nickname that was given to the Ahmed at the ending of the name. The last person we mentioned in the lineage was Ahmed, right? That Ahmed, because Ibn Hajar had the same name as him, they gave him that nickname of his as Ibn Hajar. And that's the opinion that was strengthened by Kama Rajahahu Dalika Sakhawiyu. As Imam al Sakhawi strengthened that in his book Fi Dow il and Al Imam al Shawkani strengthened in his book Al Badr al Tali'ah. And that is the opinion strengthened by who? As Sakhawi in his Kitab Al Daw Al Lami'. I specifically mentioned that because since we were mentioning what As Sakhawi was saying, you might think to yourself that it is in his book Al Jawahir Wa Dura Fi Tarjamat Shaykh Al Sami Hajar, but that's not where he said this or where he strengthened it. It is in his book Al Daw Al Lami'. And Al Shawkani, Rahimahullah, Imam Al Shawkani, Muhammad Ibn Ali Al Shawkani, in his Kitab Al Badr Al Tali'. So now we finished the first point. The first point of speaking about Ibn Hajar's name, we mentioned that. We spoke about his lineage, spoke about his nickname, and we spoke about his kunya. We're now going to speak about the second point, which is Mawliduhu wa makan wiladati. Okay? Mawliduhu wa makan wiladati. His birth. Okay? When we say his birth, we mean when was he born. And wa makan wiladati, where was he born? Okay? The scholars that spoke about the biography of Ibn Hajar, in this situation, the scholars that spoke about the biography of Ibn Hajar, in this situation, 
we won't give them a high precedence because Ibn Hajr himself spoke about his time of birth. That's it. If a person mentions their own time of birth and they talk about it themselves, then the person knows himself and where he got this information from. Sah? Ulidarika, there's a book. There's a book um, which is called Ad-Dalil al-Shafi. This book is called Ad-Dalil al-Shafi. And it has in it one of his students, his name is called Ibn Taghiri Bardi. Ibn Taghiri al-Bardi. He's a student of Ibn Hajar rahimahullah. He's his student. And he, pl- he put a question to Ibn Hajar rahimahullah. And Ibn Hajar answered that by telling him what year and when he was born. So Ibn Hajar himself said, when he was asked about his birth and when he was born, Ibn Hajar said, I was born on the 22nd of Sha'ban. And the year was what? 773. And also that is the view that was strengthened by Imam al saqawi in his kitab Al-Jawahir wa durar you see, but where was he born? Where was the place in which he was born? Sakhawi added on to that. He said, وَأَمَّا مَوْلِدُهُ فَهُوَ فِي الثَّانِي وَالْعِشْرِينَ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ سَنَةَ ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ وَسَبْعِمِئَةٍ And then he went on to say, so he agreed with Ibn Taghiri, but he added on a, 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 another thing, which is the place in which Ibn Hajar was born. So where was Ibn Hajar born? He was born ala shatinir bi Misra, the river Nile in Egypt. Well Menzil Ladi Wuri Dafi bi Misra bi Misra Marufun. And the house or the place in which Ibn Hajar was born is very famous. It was very, very famous. It was known. And it's a very pla- it's, it's, a clo- it's a place that's close to Bil Qurbi Min Darin Nuhasi Wal Jami al Jadid. It was very close to Darun Nuhas and the Jami al Jadid. Very close to it. And then he moved from that place, Ibn Hajar, and he went to Qahira, and that's where he died. He moved from that place and he went to Cairo and he died there. Rahimahullah ta'ala. We're now going to move on to the third point, which is Nash'atuhu wa talabuhu lil ilm. His upbringing and his seeking of knowledge. Nasha al Hafid ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala yatiman. Ibn Hajar, he grew up as an orphan. Ibn Hajar grew up as an orphan. His father died idmata abuhu fi rajab. His father died in the month of Rajab. Salata sab'in wa sab'in wa sab'imi'ah. The year 777. So how, how old was Ibn Hajar at that time? Four years. It was four years. He was only four, of years, four years. And his mother died way before that. His mother died before all of that. His father before he died. His father, Ibn Hajar's father before he died. قد أوصى بإثنين من الذين كانت بينه وبينهم مودة واختصاص. His father before he died, he gave a, fail, a final farewell, and he elected two individuals that he had a very strong bond with his father, and they were very close. And he told those two to take care of Ibn Hajar. The first one of those two is Abu Bakr, Zakiyuddin, Muhammad ibn Ali al Khurubi. Abu Bakr, Zakiyuddin, Muhammad ibn Ali al Khurubi. He died the year what? 787. 
787. And this man, Abu Bakr, Zakiyuddin, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Kharubi, وكان رجلا صالحا was a righteous man وتاجرا كبيرا he was a big business man من تجار مصر from the business men of Egypt the first second person is the second person is الشيخ شمس الدين ابن القطان الشيخ شمس الدين ابن القطان who died in 813 From those two, Abu Bakr Zakiyuddin, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Kharubi, and the second one who is al-Sheikh Shamsuddin ibn al-Qattan, those two, the first one, who is Abu Bakr Zakiyuddin, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Kharubi, the first one, he stood up for the affairs of Ibn Hajar, khayra qiyamin, the best. So the first one done a better job. He stood up for Ibn Hajar's affair in an excellent, unprecedented, unprecedented manner. Fanasha Ibn Hajar. Ibn Hajar had an upbringing. Even though he was an orphan, he had a very good upbringing. He, was, he grew up upon chest. He was protected from all the 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 muharramat and the sins. To the extent Ibn Hajar grew up, and no one knew of his mistakes and shortcomings and his faults. And Abu Bakr Zakiyuddin Muhammad Ibn Ali Al Kharubi. He didn't لم يألي جهدا. He didn't hold back any efforts في رعايته والعناية بتعليمه. In taking care of him and putting effort in him learning. He used to accompany Abu Bakr Zakiyuddin Muhammad ibn Ali al-Kharubi. He used to accompany him. In all of his business tra 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 travelings, and Abu Bakr Zakiyuddin Muhammad ibn Ali al-Kharubi used to have a yearly, a yearly travel where he would go to Mecca. Ibn Hajar was always with him. فَأَكْمَلَ حِفْظَ الْقُرْآنِ and Ibn Hajar finished the Quran. وَلَهُ تِسْعُ سِنِينَ he was only nine years old. At the age of nine, Ibn Hajar finished the Quran. And not only that, وَأَمَّ بِالنَّاسِ التَّرَاوِيحِ He led the tarawih وَهُوَ بْنُ الثْنَتَيْ عَشَرَ سَنَةِ Twelve years of age, he, he led the tarawih in the Kaaba. And this was after what? بَعْدَ أَنْ حَجَّ After he did his hajj. مَعَ وَصِيِّ الْخَرُّوبِ وَصِيِّهِ الْخَرُّوبِ With Abu Zakariya, Abu Bakr Zakariya, Zakiya al-Din, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Kharubi. And he stayed in Mecca until the next year of Ramadan. So a whole year from Hajj to the next year of Ramadan, he spent there, Rahimahullah. So the year he went and done Hajj was the year 784. 784, he went and done Hajj. And with Abu Bakr, Zakiyuddin, Muhammad And he stayed in Mecca until the year 785. Kharubi, he had a very great virtue. He has a virtue and a right, great, in making sure that Ibn Hajar had the right environment in which he can just focus on seeking knowledge. And he directed him towards the people of knowledge. And so that's, so whilst he was in Mecca, he went to the Musnad of Mecca. Rather, he was the Musnad of Hijaz, all of Hijaz. His name was a Shaykh Afifuddin Abdullah ibn Muhammad who died the year 
790 Hijriah. What did he take from him? This is who? Al-Shaykh Afifuddin Abdullah ibn Muhammad al-Nashawiri. What did he take from him? He took from him the majority of Sahih al-Bukhari. Ghalib of Sahih al-Bukhari. And this was said to be the first Shaykh. Awwalu Shaykh, the first Shaykh. Sami'a alayhi al-Hadith, in which he heard Hadith from him. He also took, whilst he was there, the Kitab Umdatul Ahkam, the Imam Abdul Ghani Abdul Wahid Al Maqdisi. On who? Al Al Qadi, who was a scholar of Hijaz as well, Al Hafid Abi Abi Hamid Muhammad Ibn Zahira. Al Hafid Abi Hamid Muhammad Ibn Zahira. And him and Ibn Hajar, they both research together. Fiqh al-Hadith. Fiqh and the jurisprudence to extract from Hadith. They did it together. So Ibn Hajar, the first time in Abtida'a Talab al-Ilm in the Hafiz Ibn Hajar, the starting point for Ibn Hajar, in seeking knowledge was that year which in that Ramadan which was the year 785 that year 785 how old would he be at that particular time because I already told you how old was he when he led the Taraweeh 12 so he was 12 years of age 12 13 years of age then what happened was he came back to Egypt with Al Kharubi, and the year they came back was the year 786. And he busied himself. He busied himself in knowledge. He strove, he put effort in, and he memorized Ibn Hajar. He memorized a lot of Mutun. From them is Umdatul Ahkam. He memorized that book, which is a hadith book. He also memorized the book Al Hawi Sagir by Al Qazwini, which is a Shafi'i book. It's a fiqh Shafi'i. It's called Al Hawi Al Sagir by Al Qazwini. He memorized that. He also he memorized Mukhtasar ibn Al Hajib, Mukhtasar ibn Al Hajib, which is a usul fiqh book. He also studied Mulhat al-I'rab by al-Hariri and he memorized it. He also studied the book Minhaj al-Wusul by al-Baydawi. He also studied Al-Fiyat al-Iraqi by his own teacher by Imam al-Iraqi. He also memorized and studied Al-Fiyat ibn Malik which is a grammar book. He also even memorized the Tanbih of Abu Haq al-Shirazi, the book At-Tanbih by Abu Haq al-Shirazi, which is a fiqh al-Shafi'iyya book. Alhamdulillah. Yadikumullah wa sallahu alaykum. Ibn Hajar did not stop. That's what he memorized. These books right now, they're all volumes. They're volumes. He memorized all of that. And he didn't stop there. The student, he studied at Jurumiyyah, that's it, khalas, he's a alim. Yudrabu ilayh akabadu al-ibil. People are riding beasts to come to him and take knowledge from him. Sah? La, that's not the case. The issue is, he memorized these big, these books, sarahatan, never been studied. Some of them never been taught publicly because of the weight that they have. And these were the awail of, these were the first stages of his life in seeking knowledge. Al-Fiyat ibn Malik, who studies that? Except to us, whoever studies Al-Fiyat ibn Malik and understands Al-Fiyat ibn Malik is to what? Who do we consider him as? We say, consider him as a Nihrir, Min al-Nuhat. We would say he's a Seba way of this time. Yeah? إِذَا قَالَتْ حَذَامِي فَصَدِّقُوهَا فَإِنَّ الْقَوْلَ مَا قَالَتْ حَذَامِي That's what he becomes. If he says, 
if he studies al to Malik, this was fi awail al This is the first stage of seeking knowledge. These were what? His first. He studied Muqtasir ibn Hajib. Muqtasir ibn Hajib is not a usul fiqh book, purely usul. Rather, it has ilm al kalam and ilm al mantiq and everything in it. It's confusing. Are you with me? Mulhat al Arab. He's studying. Min Hajib al Usul by Baydawi. And Tambih by Abis Haqq al Shirazi. So these are big books, really. Books that a talib has to go through a long manhaj in order to get to them. But that's the first stages. Then he didn't stop there. He started to read. And he went around to read on the scholars of ilm, the scholars and the people of knowledge. And to memorize the mutun, still. All of this was considered as what? Marharati al-futuwati wa shabab. This is his early stages. This was his first phase. You with me? But the problem that happened was Ibn Hajar with all of that which he was doing and all of that effort that he was putting in the problem that happened was Al-Kharubi died. Al-Kharubi died the year 787. And then what happened was because Al-Kharubi was a rich man and he had money he could suffice Ibn Hajar from seek, just to sit down and to seek knowledge. And when a person has that opportunity where money can come into him and he can just study and he can focus, it's an opportunity, wallah. Because you never know when this can come to an end. And the talib benefits from those opportunities and he benefits if he has a means of money to come in. Naam. But then what happened was when Al Kharubi, Abu Bakr Zakiyuddin Al Kharubi died, it became a period. And it became the reason. كان سبب كان موته سببا في فطوره عن العلم مدة ثلاث سنوات. Three years, Ibn Hajar became absent from the field of seeking knowledge and knowledge. Because he not only financially lost the aid and the support, but he also lost the what? من يحثه على العلم. The person who's pushing him to seek knowledge and telling him to seek knowledge. فَاشْتَغَلَ بِالتِّجَارَةِ And Ibn Hajar just, then what he did was, he started to go into business. They started to go into business. Why did he do that? لِأَجْلِ أَنْ يَكْفَلَ نَفْسَهُ So he can suffice himself and he can aid himself. He went into business. Kharubi died what year? 787, right? How many years did I say he was absent from the field? of? So what year would he come back again? 90. So it's the year 790, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he came back. How old would he be at this age? 17, if I'm not wrong. Yeah? He completed 17 of his years. Um, but the issue here right now is when he did come back, his perception and his focus now has become what? history and he went towards al adab literature he was focused on those rather he reached a point at this moment of his life that he doesn't hear a line of poetry except he can tell you that the person who said this if he heard you say a line of poetry he would say to you you got it from fulan ibn fulan who said it Anyone who said a line of poetry, he got to a point where he would know where he got it from. Fatawalla Abidaliki became known for that and became very strong in that. Until Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala, the field of tariq history and the field of literature and the Arabic language and poetry and whatnot, he became something else in his time. And he passed, al-udaba al-kibar. He passed the great literatures of his time. He surpassed them. And he wrote himself poetry. And this is what he did for six years of his life. He focused on that. For six years, he was into, are you with me? Just literature and history. So what year would this be? 790? Six. 
Then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushed Ibn Hajjan and placed in his heart the love of and he realized at this point the knowledge that he took from literature and the knowledge that he took from the history he realized that he required and he felt in him, to himself that he required that he had a takhassus he, had a, he was specific one of the Islamic sciences that he learned one of them the language the, he, he specialized in something to focus on something and now I want you to realize because the life of the great noble scholars like him helps us in our way to seek knowledge صح? the thing that he started with had given him the upper hand to choose now what to study because when a person my brothers wallahi with all honesty if a person grounds himself on the Arabic language very well and he studies it very well my brothers wallahi he has the right he's got the chance of choosing what he wants to study